As web designers, AI is making our lives a lot easier in so many different ways, whether from a business point of view, from a personal point of view, or from a creative point of view. Today, I want to take a look at a tool that I've come across recently that I've been testing that I think is interesting and has a couple of incredibly useful features up its sleeve that I think sets it apart from a lot of the other tools that are using AI from a design point of view. The tool is called Magic Path, and let me just demonstrate some of the things that I've created, testing this out, and then show you what that kind of key feature that I think is worth investigating actually is. So this is the first one that I've created, testing it out to create a kind of app dashboard. As you can see, it already looks pretty nice. It's a nice starting point. The cool thing about it, though, is this is partially interactive, and you can increase that interactivity by prompting the AI, by adding in other things. But let me just quickly show you. You'll see when we come over this kind of chart, we get this interactive option that shows us kind of figures that are fictitious in this example. If you scroll down, you can see we can scroll within the design itself. If you go to the right hand side, you can see we can type into this message area. It currently doesn't update anything, but you can prompt it to do so much more. This is just a starting point. Another example is my chatbot pro. I didn't name this and I didn't design this. But while the design is kind of very typical, you will notice a couple of things about this. And this is literally from two prompts. And I haven't asked it to do any of the animation or the content or anything like that. Literally give it a basic prompt. And what this has done is it's created this. So we have animated effects. You'll see as we go over, we get little animations, like this sort of chat typing in chat thing. You'll see we get animations as we hover over different things. As you scroll through, things animate in. So it all looks pretty nice. You can see we can interact with the testimonial slider. This is fully interactive. Again, I didn't ask it to do this. This has done it for us. So you can see we can very easily come in and create these kinds of layouts. So you can see this actually does change, but it doesn't update this little element here, which is a shame, but I'm sure we could prompt it to get it to do that. And you can, see, you can carry on down until we get right the way through to the end. The other cool thing about this is, though, if we scroll back up, these are actually links. Again, I haven't asked it to do this. This is literally doing it by simply prompting it at the beginning to create this page. It is taking it upon itself to kind of create these jump links. While the design isn't particularly exciting, it is a great starting point. If you want to sort of show this off to a potential client and get their feedback on various different parts of it, you absolutely could do. But this isn't even the best part. Let me jump into the editor and show you what I think sets this apart from so many other tools. So let's start off by taking a look at our dashboard, the sort of more complex design. If we click to activate it, you'll see we get a pop-up menu with a bunch of different options. The first one is the Ask Magic Path. So you can prompt the AI to do things with this particular component, they kind of call it, we'll call it a design. As you can see, we can prompt it to do various different things. You also notice at the top, we've got different versions of this, so I can step back to previous versions. This is what it starts off with. This is the second version third version, and so on. So we can go through and we can see everything that we've done. So if we're creating different versions, we can jump back at any point and we can see the kind of process. You can, like I say, prompt it. You can use what are called design systems. We'll come back on that in a moment. You can even upload images as a source of inspiration for the AI. You can also edit the component, and this is where things really do open up. And this is, in my opinion, the key strength of what Magic Path actually brings. If we select this, we now get a new panel down the right-hand side. So it's waiting for us to now select something on the page. Now, you'll notice as I hover over, we're actually getting proper web design terms, divs, SVGs, and so on, spans. You kind of see what I'm talking about. So if we select, for example, this div, now that opens up the options on the right-hand side. So we can still carry on working with AI if we want to, but we now get a design, a web design orientated panel that allows us to do various different things. You'll also notice this supports flex. So at the moment, this is using no mode. So this is just basically put on the page in a kind of typical drag and drop design tool setup. Obviously, we would prefer to have flex because it allows us to, well, flex. And if we design this flex, or CSS Grid is probably what we're going to use. If we select Flex, oh, everything just goes to kind of a bit of a mess. That's the problem. We'll just change the direction, and you can see that now is doing it vertically, which is exactly what we want. We can adjust the distribution. We can adjust the alignment. 
so you can see in center, left, right, and so on. Do you want to wrap it? What gap are we going to use? Margins, padding, appearance. You could even come in and adjust the stroke width, apply the colors, the radius of the corners, add drop shadows. But all of these are using CSS and web design code as opposed to just being a visual output tool. You can save this and you can carry on making your changes inside here to get what you want. You've also got these create flows and flows allow you to connect different components together to create various different parts of your overall design. So if you're creating a multi-page dashboard or a multi-page website, you can connect those various different components up. If you're coming from something like Figma, it's going to be very familiar to, to you. You'll also notice you can open this in a new tab, which is what we've seen where we can open it up and preview it and interact with it. And finally, if you have a pro account, I'm only on the free account here. You can see by the components in the bottom left, I've got three or five components for this month. But if we are using a paid account, you can view the code, you can download the code base itself, or you can open this up inside Cursor and carry on customizing it. And, you know, you kind of get the idea how it works. Same thing goes if we come over to this one. If we just click inside you, you can see we can carry on editing any of our components. So all our components are available and we can edit any of these. So if we select this div, you can see this isn't currently using flex. If you change it to flex, you can adjust your direction, distribution, all those kinds of good things. And of course, carry on using AI should you want to. So you click edit with AI, you can ask it to do something. We'll cancel that. Now, if you're getting value from this video, why not pop down and give it a thumbs up just to tell YouTube that you are enjoying it. While you're down there, hit the subscribe button to be notified when new content like this is added. And as always, if you're not enjoying it, you can hit the thumbs down button twice, as that seems to work pretty well too. Anyway, let's get back on with the video. Now, on top of that, this is basically using its own design ideas to create things. But let's say you want to make sure that you are following a design system supplied to you by a client or something you've created for a project. Well, we can use the design system option. So if we open this up, you'll see we have various different themes available. You've got some basic ones like OpenAI, Claude, Airbnb, and so on. So common ones you could use as a starting point, and that's pretty cool. So if we say, for example, choose Airbnb, you'll see that changes inside you to show us in this kind of preview window. And if we come over to our colors, there's our color palette that's pulling in from our primary, secondary, accent, and so on. If we jump into our typography, you can see inside here, we're not just using arbitrary values in pixel values, for example. We're currently using REM. And as you can see, it's using a scale. So we've got our base value, which is in this example set to be one REM, generally 16 pixels. And as you can see, this scales up as we go through. But obviously, you can change this from REM to pixels or M's. You can change what these values are, and you can customize it. Same thing goes for the font family. You can change the font family inside you. Maybe Bebus New looks terrible, but you see how it changes in real time. And the same thing goes if you want to see, for example, this Garamond. Go back to System. Yeah, kind of get the idea how this all works. Let's say we want to make pop-ins. Yeah, you get the idea. Come over then to your effects. So your border radius, again, you can pick between your pixels, rems, and m's. Your shadows, you can customize your shadow, your blurry radius, and those kinds of things. And your rules, if you want to apply custom rules, you can do that here. So you can see now inside here, this has picked up the styling. You can see exactly what this looks like. Any font changes, you want your light and your dark modes, you can see that here as well. And you can save this import if you create your own. And you can take a look at any of these previous ones, create a new blank system. And then you can kind of come up, you can save this if you want to reset it, you can import additional options, you can come in and you can create a new blank system from here or use one of these as a starting point. So that allows you to create the design system, then when you're actually creating anything inside you, and which we'll go and do now, let's go in and say we want to create a new component. Let's push this one over, so it just gives us a bit of space. So this is our new component. We'll say, let's create a file upload component. And you'll see down underneath, we can add an image if we've got something we want to prompt it with, and we can choose our different design system. So we'll leave that Airbnb one. Okay, so I prompted it to create a login page. We're gonna use the Airbnb color scheme, the design system, and I'm not gonna worry about uploading an image for this example, but let's go and ask it to do that. And it'll kind of give us a breakdown of exactly what stage is at as it goes through the entire process. So we let that run. And when we're letting that run, let's come back over to our chatbot. And let me just show you something that I think is pretty cool here. Let's select this component. And you'll notice that we get these resize handles. We can resize it as you would expect. And you can see the different elements. Some are static, other ones will move over. That's cool. But if we start to make it smaller, 
you'll see that various different parts of this now are fully responsive. So our navigation has changed over to a hamburger menu. You'll see that the sizing has changed to compensate for the various different component pieces. The animations are still in fact. Now it's not perfect. When you kind of go too small, it does start to go a little bit weird, and maybe the text will get a bit obscured. You see the text at the top there doesn't look great. But it is a responsive design, which is pretty nifty, and it's been done for us, and we haven't had to actually tell it to do that. It's all being handled in the background for us. So let's move that over and take a look at what it's created. So this is our login page, and as you can see, it's done exactly what I asked it to do, which is to put this image in the background of a high-end property, to have our sign-in, and this to be using the relevant color scheme from our design system, our Airbnb, so picking up that kind of red accent color. So let's go and take a look at this in the real world. So let's go and take a look like this. And as you can see, this is what it looks like, and we can interact with these various different elements. There's still a few things that are not working correctly, like the sign-in, for example, isn't available to us. But you can get an idea how this looks. Animation has been applied to it. It's done exactly what I asked it to do. It's a simple design in this example. But hopefully what this has demonstrated is how we can create these different designs. This is responsive. So you can see it will scale in the same way as we've seen with everything else. So Magic Path, in my opinion, is opening up other possibilities that we haven't seen in a lot of other design tools, or ones that I haven't seen anyway. We get the benefit of AI, but we also get the ability then to select all the different parts of our component and be able to customize, edit it, modify it, using HTML code, CSS code, using a design system that we have control over, and then being able to output that as a code base or push it over the cursor to carry on. Even if you just use this as a prototyping tool to give to your potential clients to show them how they could interact with their various different parts, how it could look, I think there's this is kind of moving in the right direction. This is taking us further into tools that become more useful than just gimmicky. But what are your thoughts? Have you tried Magic Path? Would this make you go and take a look at using yourself? Have you come across tools that do this better in a similar fashion? Let me know in the comment section down below because I would love to see those tools and try them for myself. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.